Hello everyone, I'm Queenie and welcome to the first episode of Tactical Necessity, the place where I will share some strategic knowledge to help you become better Overwatch players and climb those competitive ranks. Before we get into the video itself though, there are a few important phrases and concepts that we need to clarify because from here on out we will work with the assumption that these are some given basics everyone are more or less familiar with. The first and probably most important one is the concept of good communication, which means using the tools available to you to communicate enemy positions and coordinate team play in a positive manner. Seriously, if you're not communicating with your team while trying to stay as positive as possible, you will end up severely lowering your chances of winning and you will just make the game harder to play. Then we have the front line, the position usually reserved for tanks, since these heroes excel at standing in front of everybody else, protecting them from taking damage. The back line, which is where your average DPS and support heroes prefer hanging out. And last but not least, the flanks. The locations off to the side mainly used by high mobility heroes such as Genji or Tracer to disrupt your team, especially by getting to your backline where they will try to harass or kill your supports. Now, to quickly determine if a position is good or bad in Overwatch, there are three simple questions you can ask yourself at pretty much any given moment depending on what hero you're playing. One, can I easily see or check the paths or angles my enemies can attack me from? 2. Can I reliantly escape from here and get back to my team if someone is chasing me? 3. Can I attack my enemies and or see my teammates from here? If you're standing somewhere where the answer is yes to these questions, then you're usually in a decent spot. Bit of a disclaimer though, every game does play out differently depending on your hero and how well your team is working together. So for example, you can often see very coordinated teams, like pro teams, straying from the general rule in favor of trying to surprise or mind game their opponents. However, for the most part, these are the general positioning rules that people playing at a higher level adhere to more or less automatically, since it simply makes a lot of strategical sense. And learning this basic game knowledge is something that I think will help a lot of people improve that want to climb out of those lower leagues. Now that everyone is more or less familiar with the super basics, let's get into the good stuff. Today, we are specifically going to be focusing on defensive positioning on the first section of the map, Route 66. A map that I frequently hear isn't that popular due to players struggling with finding their footholds. Hopefully you'll feel a little bit more confident going into this map after this video. So I'm sure you've seen that it is a common occurrence that lower league players tend to favor a pretty aggressive positioning, where the idea is to try to stop the enemy team very early on. Not a terrible idea in itself, but unfortunately this makes the enemy team also very likely to get a snowball rolling throughout the entire first point. You know, the kind of situation where the enemy team keeps killing one or two members of your team so you're always fighting 4v6 and you never seem to be able to get everyone to group up properly to stop them from advancing and all of a sudden they all have their ultimate abilities and everyone on your team dies around in a pile? Yeah, the kind of snowball you definitely don't want. So let's have a look at why it's more likely for the attacking team to snowball if you try to defend at the front in comparison to defending from a position further back. First of all, you have very limited vision if you're all the way up at the front. Limited vision means that you will struggle to follow your enemy's movements and this in combination with you sitting pretty much outside their front door means that you will also have a very short amount of time to react to anything they might be doing. And unless you have mongoose reflexes and the aim of a god, this will most likely end up with you dying sooner rather than later. It also opens up all of these different angles of attack, allowing them to easily flank and break your setup. Not to mention how far it is for you to retreat if you need to run for cover, making it almost impossible for you to make it out of there alive once the attacking team starts putting pressure on you. This in turn means that when you die, you will have a very, very long way to run back to your team, whereas if the enemy team loses a member, they can reinforce and get back into the fight in a matter of seconds after respawning. Therefore, losing any of your team members early on can and most likely will be absolutely devastating. So to summarize, the closer you are to the enemy spawn, the less time you have to react to what they're doing and the higher chance there is of you dying, which might enable the attacking team to snowball as a result. I mean, look at how comfortable you could be sitting right up here at the high ground on top of Big Earl's, safe behind your tanks, with a great overview of all the paths the enemy can attack you from, and with plenty of time to see the enemy team's composition so you can prepare to deal with it. 
Setting up on the high ground will also allow you to quickly spot and call out your team if a Genji or other high mobility hero tries to be sneaky and flank you. This is where good communication will help you out tremendously. Neglecting to call out a hero sneaking up on everyone from behind could ruin your entire defense. Of course, in order to actually stop your enemies from pushing the payload, you will eventually need to go in and fight them as a team. Luckily, there is a perfect location for you to do this conveniently located right in front of you. You just need to play it cool and have a little bit of patience while working on the enemy's shields and trying to get some picks before collapsing onto them right about here. Fighting them here gives them less room to move around and makes sure that the reinforcing enemies that you pick off will have a longer way to run back with the added bonus of also breaking their line of sight to their teammates. This force is a bit of a stagger as well as making the life of the enemy team supports even harder. Keep in mind that you shouldn't hesitate to fight on the payload once it's time to contest it. Trying to kill the enemies off from afar won't do much if you're not in range of stopping it from moving. Repositioning and defending on the payload itself gets especially important once it starts getting close to the checkpoint. If the payload is successfully stopped, you can now proceed to get back up on the high ground again until the attacking team has regrouped and is ready for round two. Remember, making sure that you have as much vision as possible buys you more time to figure out ways to stop them. And that's something you can apply pretty much every time you're making positioning decisions in Overwatch. If you get the short end of the stick, however, there is still a chance to stop the payload before it reaches the checkpoint and passes on to the next phase of the map. The easiest way to do this is usually to regroup as a team and attacking them from the high ground again. The area between Big Earls and the checkpoint allows you to contest it at least one more time before moving on, since you can collapse on them from above throughout that entire area. As a rule of thumb, trickling in, you know, running in one by one instead of grouping up as a team, is never good. So make sure you check how many of your teammates are alive and gauge how the fight is going before deciding if you want to run straight back into the fight or wait for them to respawn so you can regroup. The only time you'd rather run straight back to the point without regrouping is if there is a long, ongoing fight where you simply need to get back to your teammates as quickly as possible in order to assist them. No matter if you've regrouped and getting ready to fight as a team, or if you're simply rushing back to keep fighting, reinforcing via the high ground is in most cases still preferable as it gets you a better overview of the battlefield. Keep in mind that going as a team from the same angle will usually be stronger than splitting up and trying to retake the payload from several different angles. However, if you notice that your team is dying off and the payload is just about to reach the next checkpoint, it's time to retreat and prepare for the next phase of the map. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you are looking for more tips and tricks, have any questions, or simply want me to explain something in more detail, drop by my live stream over at twitch.tv slash queen e. I stream pretty much every single day, but we'll generally be discussing the latest episode of Tactical Necessity on Tuesdays. See you soon.